Hi everyone, this is Professor G. And this is Counselor Alejandra. Thank you for joining us once again uh, today on Teco. We're going to be talking about uh, paying for college and we're going to try and focus on classes and textbooks. So uh, stay tuned because this is how we're going to help you save a ton of money. Alex, let's be <laughs> honest. Just be honest, straight up. How did you pay for your college classes? I paid for college through federal, state, and program support. And I and just to begin, I didn't know that this existed in terms of what I just shared. I just knew that my brother knew that there was a service at community college called EOPS, and they would help you start your college career. And so for me, I seek that out. Um, and you know, there was a wait list to even be part of that program itself. But I will say, you know, it was definitely worth the while in terms of waiting. Um, I put myself on the wait list. I also worked a part time job. Um, I was a waitress uh, at a pupuseria in a Mexican restaurant. Um, and so I saved my money through there uh, while I waited to hear back from the service. Because, um, you know, I didn't know who to ask for help. So, so, there, so there is help. There mm -hmm. is help. But mm -hmm. it seems like you have to go look for it. Exactly. That yeah. it, it doesn't look for you. No. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then not, not only that, you have to work. Yeah. You know, if you don't have any money, like if, you're, if your family like, is my family, my family's poor. They didn't have a dime. They were wondering how much money I was going to send home. And I'm like, look, <laughs> there's no money to send home. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and so um, paying for college is one of the major reasons, yeah. right, why people drop out of school. Or even not begin. Or not, yeah. not start school. Yeah, not start. And so, and so you hear this from your bro. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Your carnal, not anyone else, no. not a counselor. Your high school counselor didn't tell you this? No, my my high school counselor was one counselor to two different high schools. We only had one counselor. Ooh. Ooh. Um, and so so for who her, taught you about college? No, well, my oh, I had two older siblings. Well, I have older siblings in general, but I had two sisters that went to community college. And so I saw them go to community college, but like you, they were way older than me. They were like eight to nine years older than me, I, but I just knew it existed. I just didn't know how to tap into it. Got it. Yeah. Got it. So your bro kind of tells you about a program yeah. that might be might be able to help. Yeah, it <laughs> might. Um, and it did, So you though. make it to campus? How do yeah. you make it to campus? Um, and so I, I didn't live anywhere near Sac City. I lived in Esparto. Um, so I how took... How far is that? Mm, at least... Driving, like an at hour. Least, yeah, yeah, 40, 50 miles. Yeah. Yeah. But at this wow. time, I didn't have a car. Someone ran into my car. They crashed it. Uh, <laughs> so I couldn't. I've been in a couple of them. And then you're on foot for like months, sometimes even years. <laughs> yeah. And in this case, I had to use the bus. So okay. I didn't care. A lot of my friends, you know, at this point, a lot of my friends were still in high school. I had graduated earlier because I already knew that I was stuck in a small town and I didn't want to be stuck just getting married and having kids that's not something yeah. i wanted to do for myself i came from a small town yeah. too and everyone told me to get married and have kids yeah <laughs> like at 18 yeah I'm like, you're nuts <laughs> yeah and i can't even fathom like and uh, yeah i yeah. can't even fathom that's another that. story yeah. that's a different techo tip you know stay tuned we're gonna talk about marriage <laughs> and, and relationships divorce. yes yeah. and, and relationships kids. and healthy relationships yeah so so stay tuned for that one but that's a different story <laughs> back to paying for college uh, your classes and your textbooks. So, so you make it to college after obviously a bus ride, which I'm mm -hmm. sure took more than two hours. Yeah, it took two, it took two bus rides and then the light rail. Wow. Um, it took two, three light rolls. But I was determined. I was like, you know, I want something better for myself, and so I kept that in the back of my mind. I'm like, okay, if I really want to change, um, you know, what my future would hold, I knew that college was going to be a solution. Yeah. To where I wanted to be. You know, it's crazy yeah. you mentioned that. You want to change. Because uh, when, when I was, you know, 17, 18, 19, you know, I had friends who were 25, 26, 27 mm -hmm. that never left. And mm -hmm. never, you know, never left town. Never let, never really mm -hmm. uh, went on to any other training or, or mm -hmm. anything like that. And I'm like, dude, I'm going to be them. Mm -hmm. That's me 10 years from now. Yeah. And I'm like, I want a little bit better than that. You know yeah. what I mean? Because I want to be able to, to travel. I want to be able to, you know, have income that, that allows me to do things that other people can't mm -hmm. do. And so in some cases, you had to leave town. Mm -hmm. and, and growing up in small towns, trust me, I grew up in King City, California. 
The smallest town. <laughs> it's the smallest, it's one of the, it was one of the smallest towns in the Salinas Valley. Um, and you grew up in Esparta, which is even smaller. Yeah. Right? And there's, yeah. there's almost no opportunity there nope. other than like agriculture or teaching. Mm-hmm. You know, those are like the only two things you do there, right? And so, yeah, yeah. So you, you took on, you're like, you're like I got to get to the city. <laughs> yeah, I got to get... <laughs> I, I got to get close to opportunities. Yeah. But so you, know, you made it to EOPS, obviously. Yeah, I made it to EOPS. I got in. And I do want to share, too, that once my friends graduated, a lot of them started working and they fell into the illusion of, I need to acquire a lot of things to show off. Like, I have a new car or, like, yeah. I have a home. Jordans. Yeah, Jordans <laughs> or the new cell phone. Look at how much gold I have. Yeah, or jewelry or things like that. And that's not to knock, like, what they aspire to get. You know, because media plays a big role in what you want to choose and buy because we're consumers at the end of the day. Um, And so for me, it was more like I'm okay sacrificing, not looking or acting like I have money because at the end of the day, I never had it. And so why even bother um, feeding into this illusion when I can really just change my life? Yeah. And then the dream is that your education will then get you that money. Mm hmm. But by then, you know, hey, I'll be honest, I don't wear any jewelry. Yeah. Because I, I, I'm going to give you an old school tickle tip right here. Uh, one of my mentors, you know, Juan, and, you know, Juan's out there, La Chica. Oh, I love Juan, yeah. <laughs> you know, oh. uh, Juan, Juan uh, really inspired me in, in, in a lot of things. And, and uh, he, I remember one time he mentioned something. He goes, dude, I don't, I'm not flashy because I don't want to get robbed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to live by that philosophy. <laughs> I'm not either one. Yeah. <laughs> Why? <laughs> so you can take it? No. So anyways, back to paying for college. Use some of that money that you're spending on the Jordans. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. For paying for a textbook or a calculator mm-hmm. that you didn't have, right? Or a mm-hmm. better laptop, right? Mm-hmm. That, that, that's one of the first things I tell students is that you, there's these other expenses. Yeah. It's not just paying for the classes. Exactly. It's not just paying for textbooks. And and you have these other things, and we're going to talk about those things in other podcasts, mm-hmm. but when, when it comes to the first two that you're going to run into, mm-hmm. we're talking about paying for the classes, right? Mm-hmm. EOPS. Mm-hmm. EOPS is one of those programs on a campus that exists at all 116 mm-hmm. campuses, and you ended up at the one at Sacramento City College, yeah. right? And, you know, they got great people there that'll mm-hmm. take you under their wing and then teach you about, like, the Promise Grant, mm-hmm. and then that's what pays for your classes, mm-hmm. And so then you're now technically you're going to college for free mm-hmm. and then EOPS is there and they still got your back because mm-hmm. they do other things too. Yeah. Right. Which, which one of the other things they do is also help you with textbooks. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm sure that they took care of some, most of your textbooks, if not all of them. Yeah. A majority. I got a voucher um, to purchase textbooks at the bookstore. Got it. And so I was able to buy my books there. And the beautiful thing too is um, they were all you, uh, new. Some were used depending on your budget, um, but once you were done, you were able to resell and use that money. Uh, you get to keep the money. Yeah. If you can resell, so you're hustling them. Yeah, you have to. <laughs> <laughs> Which is totally legal. Yeah. <laughs> because the money, the grant, it's a grant. It's given to you. Yeah. You know, uh, are you going to keep your textbooks? Um, you know, after this semester, I'm going to be real. No, <laughs> you're not. Because no. next semester you got different textbooks yeah. and you don't have time. To go back and read the old textbook mm-hmm. you know you, you know the only reason i kept an old textbook is because i failed the class <laughs> and i had to retake the class so i'm like if i'm going to retake the class i'm going to keep the textbook yeah, and then sense. i'm going to keep the book voucher that eops is going to give me so then i'm going to you know have more money to buy more more materials that they allow you to buy with their vouchers yeah. so so you know there's different ways you can do it but it's all about you know paying for the classes so remember Board of Governor, ah, sorry, let me take that back. It used to be called the Board of Governors Fee Waiver, mm-hmm. but now they're called Promise, Promise Grants. Grant. That's one of the first things you should look into on your college campus, mm-hmm. right? Your financial aid office, your counselors, your admissions and regular go. I need to know where I can get a Promise Grant, right? Yeah. And there's different kinds of Promise Grants, okay? But they all do the same thing. I think there's three or four different kinds of Promise yeah. Grants, but they all do the same thing. They pay for your classes, which mm-hmm. in California, if you're a California resident, you're paying about $46 per unit. Yeah. And you must be a California resident to get this Promise Grant. It used to be called, for those of you who are old school like me, it used to be called the BOG, the Board of Governors Fee Waiver, mm-hmm. but everyone knew it as the BOG. Yeah. Uh, now it's called Promise Grant. 
So look, definitely look into those because they still exist. They're based on family size and income and California residency. Mm -hmm. So um, undocumented students that qualify for AB 540 also qualify for the Promise Grant. Mm -hmm. So definitely look at that. You got to do it every single year to get those fees waived. And then now you're pretty much, uh, you're not going to college for free, remember, but you don't have to at least pay for your classes. Which is a big part. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Books. EOPS. Yeah. You heard that from Alejandro, right? EOPS, definitely. How else can you lower the cost of textbooks that you know because not yeah. everyone gets an eops yep okay how else you know one of my examples is nowadays and it was harder it was harder when i was in school this was you know 20 years ago um but nowadays when you look for classes some of the classes are have what's called open source materials which mm -hmm. means free textbooks and if, and if you, at your college district, there might be a way, and if we can figure it out for you, like Teco, we're mm -hmm. going to record something. Like I know the Los Rios district, you know, the four colleges amongst Los Rios, there's a way to search for your classes that only accept open source yep. textbooks. And so those classes, there's, there is materials, but the professor provides you the materials or they have specific websites that provide you the materials. So then that's another big way mm -hmm. to just not have to pay for some of those textbooks. Now, if you sign up late for classes, well, guess which classes are full first? The ones that are free for textbooks. Yeah. And then you might get stuck having to pay for a textbook. So that's a, just a different way. How else do you know of, Alex, that uh, you can save some bucks on textbooks? So another way was there's also a really great program, program called Rise at Sac City. Yeah. Um, and so they actually had a book lending program. And so folks like me who would either resell or at least donate their books to programs like Rise, um, they'll go ahead and donate um, free books that you can check out mm -hmm. either from a program or you can even check it out at the library. What I would do is I would go to the library and I would scan the book on a PDF on a USB drive. And so I would rent it out for like three hours and then I would just copy and um, scan everything that I needed for that week. You know, I'm glad you mentioned that because most, I, I, I haven't ran into a college that doesn't do this, but mm -hmm. they have your textbooks on the reserve mm -hmm. library. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, like, whoa, what's that? That's like yeah. the VIP, you know, mm -hmm. that basically means you got to go to the reserve desk that, you know, there's the yeah. regular library desk and then there's another desk. So, so, you know, if you don't know where it's at, just go, Hey, where's, is there a reserve desk? Mm -hmm. You know, just ask anyone mm -hmm. and, uh, you get there and they allow you to check out the book. But it can't leave the building. Yeah. Usually, right? Mm -hmm. You, you got to keep it there, and you know the alarm will go off. We try to book it with it. So, so, <laughs> so, you know, as long as you're not, you know, plagiarizing the thing, you know, or, or trying to resell it, you're good. Yeah. So, so just use it. You know, check checking it out at the reserve library, mm -hmm. using it within the library, and then just turning it right back into the reserve desk. They usually have a time period that you can check it out for. You know, I can check mm -hmm. it out for two hours, and then I'd get smart. I'd check it out for two hours and then someone else would beat me because you can't do like two two check-ins at one time. So then I check it out for two hours and while I checked it out for two hours, someone else reserved it right after me. So then I'd reserve it right after them. So then technically I'd have four hours in one day. <laughs> so, you know, there's some strategies, some street strategies you can use mm -hmm. to, you know, maximize your study time in the library. Mm -hmm. So glad you brought that up. The mm -hmm. reserve book, that's the, I would go there, especially when um, I'm stuck on campus, mm -hmm. I don't have my textbook with me mm -hmm. because it's in the you know in the car or at home, whatever. I'm like, man, I'm going to the reserve library, check it out for two hours, yeah. and I still get the studying done even though my textbook's at home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, other ways, save um, money on la text. Last one is I would actually reach out to the teachers, um, mm -hmm. and sometimes they have copies of books that students either donated to them or they just have some um, laying around. And a lot of the times they would let me um, take that book. Um, so I would also ask your professor uh, yeah, for good some. Good idea. Yeah. Yep, yep. Thrift stores are a really great thing, too. Mm -hmm. Thrift stores have a lot of um, textbooks there, too. Yeah. eBay. eBay. Uh, Chegg yeah. uh, is pretty popular nowadays. Uh, you can even rent books now. I didn't have that option yeah. when I was in school. You know, renting versus <laughs> buying. Man, renting any day. You're yeah. going to give that book back. You know, mm -hmm. and so that's a very viable option now to just get the book for a quarter of the price that it would mm -hmm. be or half the price that it would be if you did the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing you do got to watch out for nowadays is software. Mm -hmm. Th there's software that are attached to some textbooks <clears throat> and you buying the book, you know, 
from 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 Jimmy, <laughs> who had the class last semester, might not be a good deal if you have to have these software access codes. And so you yeah. kind of want to watch out for those. If the class is going to require that, you know, you got to make sure you now you have to buy that book mm -hmm. because of the access code, or else you won't be able to do the class. Yeah. You know, so just as a heads up, try to make sure you figure out whether that there's software attached to it. Best way to figure that out is when you start picking your classes, there's usually a link for the textbook. Mm -hmm. Check out the textbook and then it, that'll hook you up to the college mm -hmm. bookstore where they have that book. Get that ISBN number, copy paste, copy mm -hmm. that ISBN number and paste it into eBay, paste it into Amazon, paste it into all, with Chegg, paste it into these different websites, the ISBN number. That will then pull up the right book for you, the right edition. You know, it's a sixth edition, not a you know third edition. You know, you want to make sure you're picking up the right material. Mm -hmm. So always start off with that campus bookstore website to get the ISBN number before you start searching. You know, for that textbook by name. Mm -hmm. So uh, those are a couple awesome tips. Um, you know, on paying for college and also paying and strategies on paying for or keeping or saving as much money as you can on yeah. textbooks. So if you enjoy what you're listening to, hey, make sure you give us a thumbs up. Mm -hmm. So I'm <laughs> Professor G. I'm Counselor Alejandra. And uh, we'll catch you next time. And don't forget to invite us to your graduation.